I never liked the idea of somebody else defining your destiny for you. And I think my brother Tony will tell you the same thing. Um, we, we, I, I don't like the fact that, you know, when you get into, you know, commercial banking or any other corporate job, I, you know, I, I didn't like the, I didn't like the fact that somebody said, you know, you work your ass off, you're, you know, you, you grind at this for this position for two years, you go from vice president to senior vice president, you start making this much money. And then you're from senior vice president to first vice president, you start making that much money. And then, you know, hopefully in 15 years, you'll become, you know, you know, first vice chancellor or whatever the heck it is that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to become, you're going to make that much money. But in the back of your mind, your dreams should be real, right? And Thanks all for tuning in to Dreamcatchers, where we make things happen. Dreamcatchers was formally launched to unlock the hidden potential in successful, self-motivated individuals who desire to take their life's work to the next level but need support to evolve. We are a collective group of professionals with various backgrounds that use our talents to assist those individuals in realizing their wildest dreams by providing education, inspiration, and direction. This podcast is where we share the lessons we've learned along the way to catching our dreams and give you some context around the how and the why to each approach to put you further ahead on the journey to catching your dream. Are you ready? Hey everybody, welcome to the Dream Catchers podcast. I'm your host, Jerome, and I've got John Azar with me today. John, how are things in Charlotte? Things are great, man. Things are awesome. I appreciate you taking a little bit of time to jump on the call with me today. If the listeners want to contact with you what's the best way to do that the best way to do that is email uh john j-o-h-n at macvp.com m-a-c-c-v-p.com um or they can find me on linkedin i'm under jalal john azar on linkedin or they can go to our website macvp.com m-a-c-v-p.com and always also hit me up with a text or a call i'm not afraid to give out my number it's 617-519-6211 wow and so you know, we were chatting a little bit beforehand and you were saying, you know, you left Syria when you were 16. So tell me a little bit about your journey, man. Bring me up to speed on, you know, what you've been doing and what you've been uh, focused on recently. Oh, man. I, I mean, you know, we, you jumped from, from 16 to what I'm doing now. So, I, you know, I, I don't know what ground you want me to cover. That's, that's a lot of ground, brother. That's like 30 years of ground to cover. So, you know. <laughs> really... Your story is like super inspiring. I, I had the benefit of chatting with you a little bit before and you jumped on the Multifamily Missteps podcast. So I've got an idea of all the stuff that you've been through, but like from raising money to like, you've just done so much. And so the whole goal here with Dreamcatchers is just to inspire people and let them know, hey, you don't have to have a ton in order to make your dreams a reality. So just want to give people, you know, that context and show them that like, you can make something from nothing. It is. It really, truly is about the journey. It is all about the journey uh, because the journey is continuous. The journey never stops. You know, it, it certainly doesn't stop for me. It has not stopped for my brother, Tony. And, and it, it's, it, I think being an immigrant gave me a, a different perspective on, on the journey because as an immigrant, it's, a, it's a, almost a natural instinct for us to, for me to, to look through what is good about what's going on as far as the journey is concerned, not necessarily about the destination yet. Yeah, keep the destination in mind. I always have a destination in mind, but, but that destination doesn't have to be linear, meaning it doesn't have to be the exact same destination all the time. You know, my destination when I was 18, 19, 20 years old is not the same as the destination I have today. It's not linear. That's what I mean. It's not, it's not, it's not a straight line. It's okay to, it's okay to change. It's okay to adapt to a different way of thinking because if you don't, then that means you're not growing. If you're not growing, life is too, life is too important not to grow. It's, you know, to, 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 for you to remain, remain static and not grow. Perfect. And, 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 and look, we grow by learning and by, and by sharing. That's really how you grow. I mean, to me, at least for me, that's that's how it is. I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and 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 you know pontificate on, on on growth for different people because different people grow differently. But for me, growth for me has been more about sharing and more about about learning. And I'm I am a consummate student of everything in life. I like to learn from somebody who I come across who's a homeless on the street, and I want to learn from from someone who who is a you know a titan in the industry. You know, we learn from both those people because both those people have some some for us to learn from, not just the Titan, but also the also the homeless guy on the street. And so, where did you pick up that 
concept or that thought or that idea that you can learn from anybody because there's some people who kind of turn their nose up and I, I think I've heard a number of different gurus pontificate hey you only want to take advice or learn from people who've done what you want to do so well well yeah so let's take that what you want to do is what you think you want to do right now how do you know that there's not a different way to do it how do you know that there's not a different way that you haven't even identified or they haven't even identified on how to do things so if you don't talk to other people in other walks of life or other disciplines or have different ways of doing things, you're only going to learn how to shoot the arrow one way. You know, you're, you're not going to learn how to, you're not going to learn how to fight with a knife, not just an arrow. You're not going to learn how to, you know, how to use a machete instead of a knife. You can learn the way of the samurai with a sword, but you know, you, you, you can also use, you can also use a knife. You can also use an arrow. You can also use, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm using, you know, I'm, I'm using weapons as an example. I just like to bring it to a different way to approach things. I mean, you know, so, you know, I, if you learn from one master a, a, a way to do things, that's great. But there are other ways and other discipline that, that that master may not be versed in, that they don't even know how to show you or, or share with you. So if you don't talk to other people, how are you going to know? How are you going to know what's, 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 what's out there that might be better and it may maybe it's not fighting you know techniques maybe it's uh maybe you have identified somebody who just who can find their way through the world through meditation but you don't know how to do it you know maybe they they maybe they found out how to levitate <laughs> you know you know you don't know how to do that you know so but hey and if you find somebody who knows how to levitate you know you need to you need to refer that shit to me because i need to learn that too <laughs> <laughs> above it all if you just close your eyes and fly above it all it's uh, it's uh i really like where this this conversation is going and so were there some people that showed up that just kind of uh, helped you work through those pivotal moments in your life i assume there's probably like three or four pivotal moments where you made a shift or a pivot and changed the way you were doing things or the goals you were pursuing yeah, there, there, there are, I mean, you surround, again, you surround yourself with people that you learn from and I've, and I've been lucky through life to surround my people with, with, I learn from, um, on a regular basis. And those people, and those people also change. It's okay for those people to change. On a regular. It's okay for us to have different mentors through life. However, those mentors may, may approach, may, may their, their approach be, uh, you know, I remember my, some of my earliest mentors were, and I grew up, I grew up going to Catholic school that is, and you know, I, my earliest mentors was, were, were people in, in, in religion. And, and you know, my earliest mentor was a, this, this philosopher priest that I used to go and, and spend time, you know, at, at a, at this library. He was, he oversaw this library close to where I live. And a lot of my friends when I went to this, so he ran this, uh, this organization that was, uh, for, for young adults, both girls and boys. And I went there and spent a lot of time in the library. I spent a lot of time playing with my friends with like foosball and all that kind of stuff. But I, I loved books since I was a kid. And, and he was, uh, he, he was almost like, a, I want to, I want to call him a philosopher priest because he always, uh, it was writing and reading and, and had deep thoughts about a lot of things and was, was very well versed in the world. And, and I, you know, he was probably the earliest mentor I can think of that I spent any, in any time with, uh, when I was a young, young adult, probably in my early, early teens. This was back when I was still in Syria overseas in the Middle East. And then, and then later in life, I, you know, I adapted different mentors. I mean, you know, I, I had a mentor when I was in finance, uh, who was my first boss in, in the investment industry by Morgan Stanley. And, you know, he was a great mentor. He had his own personal story. He was uh, he was a commercial fisherman, and before he got into the investment industry, and and learned so many lessons from being a commercial fisherman, and crashed crashed his boat and started from scratch. And he, I I gravitate towards people who have a flawed and and interesting perspective on their journey. You know, and it's okay because I don't you don't learn from perfection you learn from imperfection a lot more than you learn from perfection because if, if you, if you, if you're, if you're learning from, if you're learning always from perfection, you're not going to know what's going to happen when shit goes wrong. So, you know, you're not going to have a perspective of what it's like when, when it's not going your way. Um, which is the same, same as to say, learn from failure. And that's, that's true. Very, very true in, in many, many, many ways. I mean, I, 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 I was involved with uh, with TEDx Charlotte a few years ago, and my topic I did I did not make it to to 
to present my TEDx talk, but uh, I, and my, my talk at the time was about failure. And ironically, in the past few years, I've experienced a lot of failures in my life. And um, me personally, not just on the business front. And it's okay. It's okay. It makes you, it, it, it makes you a different person. It makes you appreciate your journey a lot more. It makes you learn. Um, hopefully, it's making me learn every day. You know, I still fail today. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning every, every freaking day. You know, you know, later on, my, my mentor also was my, was my brother, who's, 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 you know, who's the CEO of Mac Venture Partners, my partner in, 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 um, in this venture that we have. And, um, you know, he was also a, a great mentor of mine. We always change and we always grow and we always choose different people that come into our life for, for different reasons. And uh, hopefully we're, we are, we are, we ourselves are changing all the time uh, as we continue along that path. So you kind of slipped in Morgan Stanley and being in the banking industry or, you know, private. Then, then you said, you know, you're, you're in a partnership with your brother. And so like those family businesses, a lot of people avoid family partnerships. And so why would you leave kind of finance and wealth management to come into real estate and raise the money for buying apartments? Because you guys built a crazy portfolio. I mean, it's one of the largest I've seen firsthand. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it, it, it's a good question. I mean, look, once you it is about it is about taking taking a step towards towards entrepreneurship, which is which is again something that is not for everybody necessarily. I, you know, I don't I mean a lot of entrepreneurs will sit here and tell you that entrepreneurship is the is the holy grail. And and, and, and it's it's not. It's not for everybody. It is for some people, for sure. But it's not for everybody. There are a lot of people who are not meant to be entrepreneurs. A lot of people who should stay in their corporate jobs or or whatever 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 career path that they have. Um, I was in in in, in the corporate industry in, in the corporate path for a long time. I was um, I, I had stopped for a while and and took a segue into entrepreneurship. I launched a company after Morgan Stanley with a couple of partners that did consulting and structured finance for large scale mixed use developments back from about 2004, 2005 to about 2008. And that gave me a taste of, of, of running a company and, and, and uh, being independent and having, you know, having a, a, a accountability as an entrepreneur and, and what it's like to sort of grow a business. And, and, and that definitely put the bug in me to want to do more. And so it, and it either does or it doesn't. It either, it, either, it either changes you in a good way and wants you to gravitate more towards entrepreneurship, it doesn't. Uh, and if it doesn't, that's fine. It, it did for me. And when my business failed, uh, which it did miserably in 2008, and uh, we had to, my partners and I had to go back and get day jobs and, and go back in commercial, commercial banking and, and, and all that kind of stuff. At that same time, my brother Tony was launching the, the business that we have today in 2008. He grew the business to where it was feasible enough for me to join him in 2014 or so. I had a specific set of skills that, that uh, we integrated into the business, um, more so from the institutional side and the private equity side and, and my background in investments and finance. And so, you know, it was, it was really a great marriage for us, um, not just as, as family members, but really as business partners. So it was, it just made sense in many fronts. And, um, and it's been, thank God, it's, it's been a great journey. It's been a great journey so far. Uh, ups and downs, like any other journey, ups and downs, like any other relationships or any other partnerships, regardless whether it's, you know, that person is, is your family or not. But, uh, you know, it's, it, I'm not going to sit here and say it's been perfect every day. Uh, obviously, it's, it's never going to be perfect every day with any partner, whether it's uh, that partner's family or not. But there is one thing that, is, that a family partnership brings to the table that that non-family partnership does not is, is, is more accountability, personal accountability to your partner than than maybe a non-family membership or partnership would, would bring. Because at the end of the day, we're blood. We're not, you know, we know at the end of the day, we're not going to, we are going to look at, look out after each other's best interests because he's my brother and I'm his brother. So, so it works. And I'm not saying it works for everybody, but, but it, it works for us. No, I think it's perfect. In fact, you know, I envy you because there's not a whole lot of people who've actually figured that out. And when you can, I like making money with family and with friends, right? Because then you get to actually spend time with the people that you actually love and care about most instead of having to go and trust strangers. And so I, I think it's an amazing thing. And I think every partnerships do have some kind of issue at some point. And so when you have to work through that or you have to deal with that, I, I think you learn a ton and it makes your relationship deeper 
as long as you effectively resolve that conflict. So I think absolutely. Um, so you mentioned 2008 and I don't know if this will be the spot, but out of curiosity, like is there a point when you were going on your journey where everything was on the line and like there was a rock bottom moment for you? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, in 2008, you know, everything, the businesses that we, the business that we thought that my partners and I thought we were building came to a screeching halt overnight. I mean, I remember within, within literally a month, our entire business dried up. Uh, we had contracts all over the place. We had four or five different contracts that we're trying to close. And we had two in Boston. We had one in New York. We're looking at one in London. And, and all of a sudden, everything went to zero. And nobody wanted to move. Our capital partners pulled out. Our development partners pulled out. Uh, we, we just had nothing. We had nothing. Uh, and it was, it was pretty harsh to realize that, oh my God, like something, you know, this, this whole correction that they keep talking about and, you know, or, or recession at the time, I mean, at the time it was just in, in, in the early nascent stages of being identified as a recession. Um, it's real. And it, it, it you know, it, 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 it is more than real. It's, uh, it's going to make us sell our cars. It's going to make us have a hardship in our homes. It's going to make us we think our financial situation, it's going to make us eat rice and beans. I mean, it's, it's real. You know, it's, it, it, you know, this isn't just, this isn't just uh, making things balance out differently on the books. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's figuring out what you're going to eat next. So, you know, it, it, and I think that was, that was, that was hard for a lot of people back then. Um, and, you know, I, I was no exception and my partners were no exception. And so, you know, it, it definitely was, was a, it was a dream crusher for a lot of people that period, 2008. Because a lot of people thought they were building things. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the rug was taken out from underneath them. So, What's up, tribe? It's your host, Jerome. I just want to let you know that we put together a free 15-point checklist for exiting the matrix. Jump on over to dreamshouldbereal.com in order to pick your free copy up. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, I think it's really challenging when things shift so dramatically so quickly, right? You know, if there's a gradual progression, I think people can adjust and, and make good on whatever is around. But, you know, when everything just kind of turns upside down, it's really difficult to create that strategy to work your way out of it. And so, you know, you decided to keep going, though. Like, you could have just hung it up and said, hey, I'm going to go get a job and, you know, I'm going to mail it in. But, you know, you went in for a little bit and then you came back out. So, like, what was it? What was that moment where you're like, I got to do something different. I'm not just going to sit in here and work a job for the rest of my career. I, I think it's, it's, that, it's that being in charge. I never liked the idea of somebody else defining your destiny for you. And I think my brother Tony will tell you the same thing. Um, we, we, I, I don't like the fact that, you know, when you get into, you know, commercial banking or any other corporate job, I, you know, I, I didn't like the, I didn't like the fact that somebody said, you know, you work your ass off, you're, you know, you, you grind at this for this position for two years, you go from vice president to senior vice president, you start making this much money. And then you're from senior vice president to first vice president, you start making that much money. And then, you know, hopefully in 15 years, you'll become, you know, you know, first vice chancellor or whatever the heck it is that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to become, you're going to make that much money. And don't get me wrong. The money's great. And if you keep going that, that path, the money will be there for you to some extent. You know, obviously, you're going to make a, a lot more money than a lot of people can. But I don't know. I always wanted to, I always wanted to maybe, maybe it was a romantic notion. to. I always wanted to believe that sky's the limit. That I, and, and I don't want to be defined by, I don't want to be defined by some board sitting around somewhere saying, John should get paid this this year, and that's who he should get paid this next year. I want to decide on when I should get paid this year, when I should get paid next year. I don't want some, you know, I don't want some, some committee deciding what, what I'm going to get paid in the next two or three or five or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, you know, of my life. So, I, you know, to me, that, that was probably the biggest, the biggest impetus for, for entrepreneurship. And, I, and that's why I never let go of that flame because even, even when I was working the jobs uh, that I did, I always had some side hustle for years. And, you know, my, um, you know, my friends or my ex-wife at the time, you know, they, they would always say like, you know, you always, you always have to have like a couple of different balls in the air and you have to have like a little side hustle going on, you know, you always like, 
I, I would do like my commercial banking job or my whatever, and then I'd have some 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 private consulting job on the side that I would try to do. And I, it's just because I've always believed that that was going to be my path to some extent or another, and I wanted to be sharp and I wanted to sharpen up the tools and you know have my, have my arrows always ready to go uh, when that time comes. And that time came when 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 I joined my brother. Your story is super inspiring for me because you've just been up and down and without giving up hope and without giving up faith and belief. I thought it was really interesting that coming from the Middle East that you were in a Catholic school for a training. Um, usually the predominant uh, ideology for a religion standpoint is uh, Islam there. Uh, yeah. Was there, was that you or, I mean, was it just a way of life and just kind of went with it? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, so we, you know, Christians in the Middle East, or specifically in Syria, are a minority. So we are, you know, we're about less than ten percent of the population in Syria. So, um, and they were treated as a minority group, uh, and still are treated as a minority group. So, you know, if there's any experiential learning from being a minority group in a country, um, you know, it, it, it is definitely an experience that is, uh, I, I think, anybody here in America could share uh, who is not a majority, you know, as far as, as, far as ethnic race is concerned. So, um, you know, um, so there, there, was, there was a weird different type of prejudice and racism in, in countries like Syria for, uh, for minority religious groups that 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 definitely showed its showed itself very bad ways sometimes you know i known people that were stopped and went to jail because just because they were wearing a cross around their neck um or uh, or just because of their last name um or just because of you know they were seen going into church or something like that so it, it's unfathomable to somebody here in the states who, who experience religious freedom to some extent but it's not unfathomable for someone of color here in the united states to to identify with something similar to that because um because it's the same thing you're looked on and identified and automatically categorized based on something that is not even in your hand that's that's you know your last name or 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 the way you dressed or where you went to church or or where you went to pray. I mean, that, you know, these are things that you should, nobody should be, should be punished for. But you are in this world, unfortunately. So, um, so yeah, that did give me a different perspective and it gave me a different perspective when I moved to the United States. I've always been very open and very accepting to all creeds. And I, I, I see people as people and not as any other social identifier, ethnic, race, religion, education, none of that matters. You know, you're either, a, you're either a good person in this life or you're not a good person in this life. And these are the only two identifier I care about, you know? So I either, you know, you, 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 I don't need, I don't need all these other identifiers. You know, I, in my, in my perspective, you're either an asshole, you're not an asshole. So that's it. That's, that's, that's the only thing I'll be prejudiced about in this life. I will always be prejudiced against assholes. We got a strict no jerk rule. <laughs> <laughs> no jerk rule, man. No jerk rule applies here. That's it. If you're a jerk, I'll be I'll be prejudiced against you. That's it. <laughs> what are you most grateful for, John? What are you most grateful for? Uh, man, I'm grateful. I'm grateful every day for different things. I'm 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 grateful for the, you know, the family I have. I'm grateful for the network of friends I have. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to get up and, you know, breathe and live another day and see another sunshine every day. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, I'm grateful for, for what I have access to from a business perspective. The, 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 um, I, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for my network that I've built. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my partners. Um, so I'm grateful for my from from my partner now and and my girlfriend. I'm I mean you know I'm grateful for my kid and the kids that we share together. I mean so it's you know there's so many things I'm grateful for. Uh, it's um 
you know, if, if, if you're, if you don't stay grateful and identify what, what is a blessing in life every day, you're always going to try to see the negative. And I, I don't want to see the negative. Um, I know I'm not perfect by any means. I've done some not so good, nice things. And I've done some, some, some things that, that definitely were negative for me in my life. But, um, but I try to learn and I try to grow and I try to make my life better for, for, for myself and for those around me and for those I care about. The thing that I like about your response, and I don't know if you realize this, is it was all people, right? It was, had nothing to do with any material thing. And I think more and more people are realizing what's most important is our relationships and our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with those folks closest to us. Um, and so I really appreciate you pointing that out and, you know, sharing your perspective. And, you know, I've talked to you enough to know that you're always genuine in your responses. And, you know, that's truly how you feel. It's not made up um, or contrived or you just trying to be on some like silly message that your PR people gave you. So, again, man, that <laughs> it truly is, because I remember when I was young. I didn't care about who was around. Like the people didn't matter. The activity mattered. Right. So like I was an athlete, so I could play with anybody. It didn't matter who I was playing with just as long as people were around. As I've gotten older, I've realized that the people make all the difference. And now it doesn't matter the activities or the material things that are around, whether it's a car or a house or whatever it is, it's the people that make all the difference in the experience. And so Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I materials and, and, and things. I mean, you know, it, you know, just as much as I do it, materials come and go money comes and go, man. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's nice to have it, but it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to change your life. You know, it, people ask me about moving as well. I mean, it goes, goes, goes to the same theme is, you know, where, where do you feel most comfortable at home and on where's home for you? You've moved so many times, you know, where, where do you see yourself as, as being home? I said, I don't know. I don't have, you know, home is where you have loving relationships and loving people and loving experiences and, and, and have, you know, have good feelings around people that you live with and, and, and you surround yourself with. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether you live in a, in a, in a small hut or a big, big mansion. It's, it's not about that. It's about the experiences that, that you surround yourself with and, and the exposure that you give, give yourself. And you're right, man. I mean, you're, you're, you're a prime example. You mean, and we all, and that's a natural journey. I mean, you went through the same journey. I mean, you're, you, you were an athlete before and, and, and there are so many things that matter to you probably that don't matter to you at all now, or that you look back at them and think, Oh my goodness, I can't believe that mattered to me so much back then. And you know, same, same for me, same for me. Yeah. I, I used to live in a 6,000 square foot house at a Nissan GTR and I don't have that stuff anymore and I don't miss it at all. Like, yeah, just the re quality of the relationships has made such a dramatic difference in my life and the level of happiness that I've been able to achieve and just overall satisfaction that like all the toys and trinkets don't matter anymore. And so super, super grateful for this part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, what got you to that realization yourself? What, what made you have that realization? What process did you have to go through? I, I think it's what everybody has to go through, right? You climb up the ladder and you get there and you're like, is this it? Like, I, I imagine, I haven't been to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, right? But I imagine when people get up after that long, arduous trek, they get up there and they take the view and they're like, man, this is amazing. But then they got to walk back down. And it takes however long it takes. And it's like, I did all of that for this. Um, it's about, and you've talked about it a little bit, it's about the journey. It's about the process and enjoying the process as you go through it, smelling the roses as you go along versus trying to rush to that end. I used to be a checklist guy, right? I just got to get it checked off the list. I got to get it done. But there's so much value in actually being as you go through the actual process of checking it off the list and that's for me all the value now and um, really just been deeply focused on creating high value relationships and embracing people who are on that same path i realized and i think the other thing that happened john is one of my high school teammates hambo he died right and this was in 2012 and i went to his funeral and 
I got there like three hours early and I started asking myself, I'm like, am I here for him or me? Because he and I hadn't talked since graduation from high school, right? It had been 12 or 15 years or whatever it had been. And I didn't really know much about him. I showed up out of respect for who I remember him to be and just pounded Mm -hmm. on one of the best people I ever met in the world. But, you know, I've been spending all my time trying to figure out how to make more money and be able to build this big life. And I thought all the accomplishment was from the material things. And in hindsight, what I really realized is it's all about significance. And I can't agree with your point more than probably anything else you said. Like the money doesn't really matter. Money's like air. Like a whole lot of people take air for granted, right? They breathe in, they breathe out. As long as they have their health, they're good. As long as you don't need money or you have enough money to cover the things that you want or you need right now, you don't really appreciate or value the money. It's only when it's missing that it becomes super critical for you. And what I figured out is like, there's always more. But when you can get okay with enough, like when you have enough and you can be happy with that, um, there's just this level of freedom and com- uh, contentment that comes from that space. And so I, I've been walking that walk, man, and it's it's been extremely freeing and allowed me to do things I'm passionate about instead of just working to make more money because, I mean, there's always more that you can make. And so if you're trying to be the wealthiest person in the world, well, somebody's going to knock you off at some point. And so now what are you going to do? Spend your time trying to get back on top? I, you got to decide what you want your life to be, build that lifestyle, and then work against that as your kind of your North star. So that's. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, 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 I hear you, man. I hear you a hundred percent. That's, that's, uh, that's the only way to approach it. That's the only way to, to see it. I, I, I couldn't agree more to what, everything that you said. And I, I totally lodge you for your journey that you have so far. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I we all have goals still. I mean, and people sometimes misunderstand the working towards certain goals with working towards money. Um, I mean, you can talk to people who are very successful and people will accuse them sometimes of, Oh, they're so greedy. They want more. I don't think they want more people who are highly successful, like Elon Musk or, or, you know, any, any of those guys, it, it, it's not about the money anymore for them. It, it is about the next challenge that they can overcome themselves. They've already got all the money in the world that they can, they can, you know, they, you know, obviously for them, it's a different story than us, but you know, I, I, and I, and I'm definitely not compare us to, to Elon Musk, but, you know, but, but, you know, I, I'm working towards a goal and, and, you know, whether it's to grow a portfolio or, or launch a fund or, you know, have us give us exposure to more, more few thousand more units, but that's not because I want more money. It's because I want to grow something and I can challenge myself to grow it and attain it and accomplish it. Not because of, not because of the money aspect of it, because, you know, money will come. Hopefully it'll come when we do all these things, but, but you know, it's, it's, you don't do these things because the money and, and same, same to yourself. I mean, you're trying to grow and get better and maybe grow a portfolio in this business, but you're not doing it just because you want to count the next dollar. You're doing it because you want to learn and you want to explore and you want to push yourself to see if you can get this done. Yeah. For me, I mean, the mission in the multifamily space is to help other people create time freedom, right? I've got this grand plan. We're going to help 100 people get out of jobs that they're not passionate about anymore by creating passive income through multifamily investing. They can go off and work on the things that are most important to them, right? The passion projects. That's what it all comes back to is the passion projects. So I, the money's a tool, right? You, yeah. you want to see something happen, you can write a check to fund that venture for happening. If you don't have the yeah. money, you can do those things, right? Yeah. So, yeah we just want to be able to harness the tool and make application. One of the things yeah. that, um, drove me on a multifamily is doing due diligence and seeing some of the cognitive dissonance that our fellow landlords have, right? They get labeled as slumlords, but they just don't care and don't do their part and make sure that the people have a quality environment to live in. Um, there's yeah. a lot that's on the tenant but there's a whole lot on the owner of the property. And so we want to be 
you know, that good actor in the community setting the standard for what people should be doing. And we have a model where we believe that we can make money and do good in the community. And we yeah. do both. It's not just about making a dollar. And so that's, that's amazing. We are where we are. And so, you know, we're running a little low on time. I've got two questions for you. And one of them yeah, man. You just answered. And so the first one is, you know, what gift are you giving the world? What gift do I give in the world? Um, I, I my 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 time and my and and my commitment to people who need it the most. You know, whether it's students of the of the craft that they are, they want they want better opportunity, better exposure, more mentorship, more coaching, whatever it might be, or um, or maybe young young adults. Uh, I, I've always been more passionate, very passionate about helping young young adults find their way in the world. And, um, I've done that through various organizations in the past. I, I did that when I used to live in Boston through an organization, a wonderful organization called Year Up. I've done that through Boys and Boys and Girls Clubs. I've, I've, I've done that uh, with Little Brother, Big Brother program. Uh, so it's, um, it, 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 I think if you can catch people earlier on in life and redirect them, redirect their effort into into something that they are passionate and safe about and not necessarily, I don't mean safe in the, in the word that they, they should play it safe, meaning keep them out of harm's way safe, you know, you know, not have them get involved in things that are going to be life ending sometimes for them. Um, and, and hopefully help them identify a different crossroad. Uh, that, that I'm very, very passionate about. Um, and, and that's why I love being involved in, with organizations that, that work with, 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 um, with young adults and, and, and early adults and to, to help them you know, identify and maybe, um, you know, help them along the way. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about obviously other, other causes and organizations mostly related to, um, immigrants and children's. And, um, I, you know, there are a couple of different organizations and charities that I, I like to donate to and, and hopefully someday I will have enough bandwidth and time to, to volunteer. <laughs> I, I don't right now, unfortunately, unfortunately, but, but hopefully someday I will. Perfect. I really enjoyed that piece. And so the last question I have for you is what is the one thing you want people to take away from our conversation today? Uh, just, just keep, keep traveling along that road and, um, and, and, and never be afraid to stop along the way to learn about yourself and learn about others who may need you to learn from them and, and, and for them to learn from you. Um, it's okay to stop. It's okay to, to, to take a different side road. It's okay to, to pivot for a while and, and contemplate where you are and, 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 and taking, take in what's, what's around you and, 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 and maybe even learn something new completely. Uh, don't be so, don't be so focused on your destination. Don't be so focused on, on some target that you need to run to all the time. Um, stop, take a breather, learn, enjoy, be grateful, be humble. Um, that will go a long way to, to making you happy a lot more than it will go until for you to get to some destination because believe me it, by the time you get to the destination you've and if you skipped all those things you're not going to be happy john i appreciate you being so generous with your time today um this has been amazing i'm i'm so thankful that you were able to share with us um we'll talk soon man thank you absolutely man thanks thank you for joining the tribe today we would love to hear from you Please don't forget to rate, like, and share. Perhaps someone you know could benefit from what we've discussed. Until the next time, remember that your dreams should be real.